Hello everyone! In this video, we will demonstrate how you can use Solex, the Solar Explorer, with limited investment, quickly and very simply. Have fun! The instrument we will use in the first part of this video is not the big telescope you see here. It is a 10 inch Ritchie Gretrian. Not at all. Our instrument is an ordinary small finder scope, normally used for pointing at sky objects, and sometimes for guiding. The telescope associated with Solex is therefore very compact and inexpensive, as promised. Here an Arte sky model of only 32 millimeters in diameter, very common. The interest of this experiment lies in the fact that we do not have to dismantle anything. We use an equipment probably already present on your telescope and we just attach Solex to it. You can observe the surface of the sun whenever you want. It's quick and easy. The finder scope is probably already equipped with a camera. Here a model ZWASI 290 mini. You may not have an additional purchase to make because this camera, after disassembly of the find scope, can eventually be used with Solex. To finish, one fixes Solex equipped with its camera is assembled at the back of the fine scope. We tighten the screws, and it is finished. We beat a kind of speed record for the assembly, because you can already almost observe the sun. Solex with the camera, weighs only 580 grams. The fine scope easily supports this mass, especially since it is robust, with parts made of good metal. On the other hand, this type of finder, here of Skywatcher origin, is not adapted because of the instability of the fixing. The comfort of use is very limited. It is necessary to prefer models with ring attachments, as here. The finder scope is held much more firmly. Note that there are accessories allowing to exchange the eyepiece by a camera interface with a 1.25 inch nose piece, and thus by the same occasion, an interface for Solex. The entrance of the main telescope is obstructed. The intense sunlight must not enter this instrument for security reasons, of course. It is only the very small telescope adapted in parallel which is really used for this demonstration. An important point to underline is that the back focus of this finder scope is sufficient to focus without difficulty the image of the sun at the entrance of Solex. Focusing is done by turning the objective tube, it is simple. The intense solar flux is filtered using the neutral optical density at the entrance of the fine scope, fixed with an interface made in 3D printing. We check that at the focus of the telescope, the temperature rise is moderate. For this, we check that it is possible to hold the hand at the focus for more than 30 seconds without burning. This is a good test to make sure that there is no risk of overheating for the material placed at this focus. To achieve this result, we use a neutral density of the company Bider. More precisely a density of value 0.9, which leaves only 10% of the incident flux. At the same time, the entrance of the fine scope is limited to 16 mm through the use of a diaphragm, which is positioned in this way. This diaphragm reduces the flux at the focus. At the beginning, this finder scope is f3.75 instrument, which is too luminous to give good images. Therefore, the use of this diaphragm allows a greatly improved sharpness of images. Since the focal length of this finder scope is 120 mm, it finally works at f7.5, which is a good choice for Solex. A 1.25 inch filter is perfectly suitable here. Here is the interface made in 3D printing with a 1.25 inch thread. If we select the batter company, we have the choice between a density of 1.8 or 0.9. The attenuation will be very different between the two, so it will be necessary to adapt the exposure time when taking the picture. You can also make diaphragms of different diameters. We have already indicated that a density of 0.9 and the diaphragm diameter of 16 millimeters is correct. 
The interest of using a small telescope is that it is possible to operate a small model of optical density, costing less than 50 euros, consistent with the spirit of our system. Then you operate Solex in the normal way without using another filter. But you can also add a filter to increase the contrast in the images by reducing the instrumental diffusion. The diffraction grating is mainly responsible for this phenomenon. Here, for example, a broadband filter that isolates the red part of the spectrum, an R-band filter, useful if you observe the H-alpha line and to better see the very faint prominences at the solar limb. The presented model is designed for CCD sensors, but you can now find CMOS models quite equivalent. This type of filter is usually used to make color images of the deep sky from a monochrome camera or for photometry. You can also use a narrow filter, designed for photographic observation of nebulae, but this is only an option. Use only if you already have this category of filter, because the purchase price is high and the component not essential here. The adopted orientation of Solex is critical. At the time of the scans, it is important that the image of the sun moves well perpendicular to the long axis of the Solex slit. To do this, you must make sure that the mechanical plane of the box is in line with the declination axis of your telescope mount. Do not neglect this point. Think of making a small screen which will protect Solex from direct sunlight. This prevents the mechanical plastic housing from heating up and deforming under the effect of this heat. If a camera of the type ASI 290 Mini works very well here, you can also use a model with a larger sensor, such as the Aussie ZW 178mm camera, well suited to Solex, and working in the same way. We are almost ready to make our first observations. But first, it is important to make sure that the telescope is already pointing correctly at the sun. To do this, Temporarily remove the camera and project the image of the sun onto a paper. Make sure that the image of the sun is concentric with the shadow of the telescope. This method of pre-centering is a trick to remember. Unfortunately, after this pre-centering, the image of the sun is rarely on the slit. You see here, with the acquisition software, an image of the sky background coming from the scattering of the sunlight, but the sun is not present. Increase the exposure time and the gain of the camera to better see the background. By pressing one of the buttons of the telescope hand controller, on the right, you notice for example that the brightness of the background decreases. You must then press the opposite button. You will then see the brightness of the sky increase little by little, which means that the image of the disk approaches the slit. At a certain point, the image becomes very intense. You lower the gain of the camera, for example, and you continue. The image becomes very bright, because the disk has just arrived on the slit, by the right side. We lower the exposure time, then we continue until a maximum size of the image of the disk. We act at present on the axis north, south, by pressing the north and south buttons, we position the spectrum in the center of our sensor. We decrease the camera gain. The edges of the disk appear very blurred, but it is indeed the spectrum of a section of the solar disk that we see here. You doubt well that the next operation carried out there is well the focusing of the image of the disk on the slit. For this we act on the displacement of the finer scope objective. By successive trials, we try to obtain the best sharpness of the edges of the spectrum image. So we start in this position with the edges of the spectrum well blurred. By acting on the lens we can improve the situation. We get closer. And here is the result, which is already correct.
We can still improve by enlarging the image with the zoom option of the SharpCap software that we use here, or by working in binning 1x1. This allows you to see better what you are doing. Take a look. The edges of the disc are now very sharp, like razor blades. Here we have made a very good focus of the solar disc image in the plane of the Solax slit. It is also possible to use the presence of sunspots. When the image of a sunspot is on the slit, this produces a decrease in intensity. It is reflected by a vertical line that occupies the entire spectrum. The idea is to act on the focus to achieve the finest possible line. In addition, when the image is sharp, it is possible to see a microstructure in the H-alpha line, the line that we have selected here. These are Doppler Fizeau shifts. Locally, the line shifts towards the blue or red depending on whether the gas approaches or moves away from us. Seeing this type of detail is a sign of quality for the adjustment of the instrument. You can vary the appearance of the line by using the east and west buttons on the hand controller. It is a spectacular result. It is important to understand what we see on this screen. It is the solar spectrum, more precisely, a small portion of the solar spectrum centered on the red H-alpha line of hydrogen. The axis of spectral dispersion is vertical, it is also the axis of colors or wavelengths. This particular orientation is chosen by rotating the acquisition camera. It allows to obtain horizontal spectral lines, a non-standard view, but which accelerates enormously the reading speed of the sensor after applying the crop, we will see it later. What we see here is the spectrum of a narrow section of the solar disk, which passes through the diameter of this disk. Given the orientation of Solex with respect to the equatorial mount, the edges of the spectrum, on the left side and on the right side, correspond to the southern and northern points of the solar limb. Note that given the angular diameter of the Sun and the focal length of our finder scope, Arte Sky, 120 mm, the linear size of the solar disk on the slit is only 1.1 mm. Consequently, by pressing the east and west buttons on the hand controller, it is easy to walk around the disk to explore these eastern or western parts. As we have seen, if a spot is present on the slit, a vertical line is formed. It is sometimes called transversalium. We notice the presence of the shadow of a dust. The cleaning was not well done. This artifact is not annoying because it is located outside the neighborhood of the H-alpha line. We do not need to acquire the entire surface of the sensor to make the SER file containing the scan data. The reading of the detector would be very slow and the volume of data on the storage disk would be enormous. We will simply capture a small region of the image, censored here on the H-alpha line, and which also includes the edges of the spectrum with a little margin. The operation is called cropping, and the coordinates of this area is the region of interest, or ROI. The SharpCap software keeps these parameters from one session to the next, which is very practical. For example, here we have chosen a ROI area of 960 pixels by 96 pixels. Indeed, the largest size of the disk on the detector is 610 pixels. The suitable width of 960 pixels largely encompasses this dimension, with a very generous margin to facilitate centering the spectrum in the ROI area. The height is chosen of 96 pixels to capture the H-alpha line, but also part of the spectrum on both sides, the spectral continuum, to generate from the same SER file images of the solar photosphere. We define our ROI zone with the Sharp Cap software in this way. A small rectangle indicates the position of the ROI in the whole image. The goal is to move this rectangle vertically to find the H-alpha line. So we look for it one way or the other. Here it is. 
We center it. That's it. You press the north, south buttons to center the image of the disk in the surface of the ROI area. Of course, you can use a physical hand controller to make the moves, for example with a computer near the telescope. We are going to carry out our first solar scan, which will result in a SER file, from which we will then extract an image of the solar disk. The telescope is the Finder Scope Arte Sky of 32 mm in diameter, stopped at 16 mm. For the acquisition, we use the Sharp Tap software. Note the chosen cropping zone, which isolates the H alpha line. We work in binning 1x1. The exposure time of 13.4 milliseconds, a somewhat arbitrary choice at this stage, we will see the consequences later. This leads to a reading speed for the ROI area of 75 frames per second, quite compatible with the power of the computer used. Be careful, you must nevertheless use a USB 3 connection with the camera. On the side of the telescope mount, we have chosen a scanning speed of 16 times the sidereal speed, which ensures a scanning time of only 10 seconds. The acquisition is therefore very short. Attention, when we produced this part of the video, the Wi-Fi link between the acquisition computer located near the telescope and the control computer located in the house was of very poor quality. This is the reason for the jerks that you will see. The acquisition is much more fluid at the level of the acquisition computer. The east and west buttons of the hand controller are used to move the image of the sun disk out of the slit. Here we choose the west button. Now, you will not see anything on the screen, no more spectrum. We will now perform the scan capture. Logically, we click on the button Start to Capture in the command line located in the upper part of Sharp Cap interface. A dialog box opens in which you define the parameters of the recorded SER file. We choose here an unlimited recording. This starts as soon as you click on the Start button. The recording on the disk begins immediately. Without waiting, we press then permanently on the button east of the hand controller. The image of the disk scrolls then in front of the slit during approximately 10 seconds. During this time you can see the section of the disk widen and then shrink. You will also see the sunspot spectrum appearing. The disk is taken out of the other side of the slit. It is then necessary to think of stopping immediately the recording of the SER file to avoid acquiring useless data. A very good reflex is to press the West button of the hand controller in order to bring nearly the middle of the disk on the slit. This procedure helps to start from a well-controlled situation to perform the next scan. We now use the INTI software to assemble all the frames present in the SER file in order to build the image of the disk in the wavelength of our choice. Once INTI is open, we choose the folder where the SER files are saved. Then select the SER file that has just been captured. The default INTI setting is used. Then click on the OK button. It is very simple. The processing is fast, and here is our result. We see the image of the solar chromosphere using the light coming from the core of the H-alpha line. Many details are visible. Here an image of the prominences at the limb of the sun. A digital mask simulates an eclipse to better distinguish these feartors. Unfortunately, if we examine a raw image before processing, we see that it is oval and tilted. This is a serious problem. If we look at the INTI output console, it appears that the SY per SX ratio is 1.23, much higher than the nominal value of 1. This means that we are undersampling the image due to a too long exposure time for each frame. We lose information as soon as the scan is acquired. This explains the vertically elongated rugby ball shape. The image should nominally be circular. 
since the exposure time is 13.4 milliseconds and the form factor is 1.23, it is easy to calculate that an exposure time of 10.9 milliseconds is required to obtain a round disk just after capture, before processing. It is also noted that the Solex orientation error is greater than 4 degrees, which is considerable. Normally, the error would be less than 1 degree. To correct this error, the orientation of Solex on the telescope must be adjusted. We have now corrected the exposure time value to 10.9 milliseconds, and we have adjusted the orientation of Solex. This matter of orientation is often confusing when you are just starting out. With practice, you will quickly learn to find the right range of rotation and direction. Also remember to adjust the camera gain. The goal is not to saturate the continuum level in the vicinity of the H-alpha line in order to obtain correct images of the photosphere when processing with the INTI software. The procedure is identical. We click on the West button of the hand controller to output the sun image of this lit disk. We ask for the capture of a SER file. The default parameters are chosen, then we click on OK. Without waiting we press the East button of the hand controller. The image of the disk scrolls. This takes about 10 seconds. When the image of the disk comes out of the slit, we think of stopping the recording of the SER file. And as always, we finally position the image of the disk relative to the slit in a neutral position to be ready for the next acquisition. From the INTI software, we open the SER file. Then we run the processing, always in the same way, without asking questions. Here is the H-alpha image processed from the new acquisition. It looks like the previous one, but in reality, the image is of better quality. The image of the prominences indicates a good horizontal scan. And the raw image is now well rounded. The sampling is correct. This is much more satisfying. If we look at the INTI console, we can see that the SY by SX ratio is almost equal to 1. Moreover, the tilt angle is also almost 0 degrees. Everything is nominal. These settings are constants of your instrument that you can use for your new observations. You don't need to do this adjustment work anymore. Here is our result. By embellishing it. By putting colors attached to the observed wavelength. On the left, we see an image of the chromosphere in the red line of hydrogen. In the center, we have an image of the prominences in the form of an artificial eclipse. Finally, on the right, an image of the photosphere with sunspots using an area of the spectrum just outside the H-alpha line. It is important to note that this image is extracted from the same scan as the one used for the image in the H-alpha line. So Lex and INTI allow to perform a multi-wavelength observation in a flexible and simple way. Another result. On the left we find our image taken in the H-alpha line, while on the right we have a Doppler image of the chromosphere. The intensities and colors indicate respectively the speed of the gases and the direction of their movement, depending on whether they approach us or move away along the line of sight. The change of color between the eastern and western edge reveals, in an instantaneous way, that the sun turns on itself in about 25 days. Indeed, one edge approaches us, the other one moves away, which leads to this variation of speed between the left and the right of the image. We measure this radial velocity very simply with INTI software by exploiting the spectral information located in the wings of the H-alpha lines. Remember that everything you see here is done with a finder scope stopped at 16 millimeters in diameter, costing less than $150. And of course in association with Solex, a low-cost instrument that is fun to set up and use. A little curiosity. We observe now with cirrus clouds in the sky. We start the scan of the surface of the sun, as with a photocopier, here by pressing the west button of the hand controller. 
we notice the presence of the clouds in the form of very mobile drapery during the scan. We stop the acquisition. We scan in the other without returning to the neutral position. The image is now very darkened by the clouds. All this is shown in real time. At the end, we process the SER file in the classical way. We look for our last file. And we process. Here is the result. We can see the image of the clouds during the observation. This can happen accidentally. Of course the image is not usable. Even if we can guess the prominences. It was a little moment of relaxation. To finish this video, we will quickly explore the possibilities of another popular finder scope from the same brand, the Artex IMK2 model with a diameter of 60 mm and a focal length of 225 mm. The finder scope has a precise helical focus. We also have the possibility to rotate the whole focal equipment without defocusing. This is extremely convenient for orienting selects in relation to the scan axis. We remain on a low-cost equipment, less than $200, which can also equip your telescope, and which can accommodate selects without disassembling, and in a simple way. The whole set is well-finished and robust, a fine companion for selects before eventually using larger telescopes. The strategy to reduce solar flux is the same as before. The filter is this time compatible with the 2-inch equipment with M48 thread. This is of course a bit more expensive, but still reasonable. If we stay with the ba Ader brand we can choose a density of 0.9 or 1.8. As before, it is strongly recommended to add a diaphragm to obtain a sharp image of the sun. A diameter of 30 to 35 millimeters is suitable. A white screen can be adopted to protect the select structure from an abnormal temperature rise. A tip. Fix markers on the telescope and on the select structure. Put in front of each other, it will allow to realize a satisfactory rotation presetting at each select assembly. And remember to do the hand test. If you don't notice a very significant temperature rise after 30 to 40 seconds, everything is fine. Here the find scope is equipped with a 0.9 density filter on the front and stop to 35 mm diameter. Here is a result with obtained with the find scope Arte Sky of 60 mm, reduced to a diameter of 35 mm. Compared to the previous equipment, the focal length increases from 120 mm to 225 mm, so the image of the disc is better resolved. But the ease of use is the same in both situations, with a deep learning of the select capabilities. Very in-depth, with results that can be of great educational and scientific value, in addition to the pleasure of obtaining them with such a modest equipment. Without any treatment at all, we can already see interesting things from this spectrum. The entrance lint of Solex has been positioned almost tangent to the solar limb. By pushing the exposure time and the gain of the camera, we can see here a small prominence and projection on the sky. By progressively taking the disc out of the slit, we end up seeing the structure of the chromosphere in profile, then finally the sky background. During the same observation session, but unfortunately in the presence of clouds, the image of an eruptive protuberance was captured. It escaped very quickly. There is a lot of life on our star, which is an additional attraction during its observation. Phenomena very well revealed with Solex and a small telescope. Solex offers the possibility to select its working wavelength. We choose to observe the chromosphere in the H and K lines of calcium in the ultraviolet part of the spectrum. Here are these two lines, very wide. Beware, a severe chromatic aberration affects both the telescope and Solex. It is obligatory to refocus both carefully before beginning the observation.
It is a simple and fast operation with the helical focusing systems used in both cases. Here, it is the H line of calcium that is isolated, because the intensity of the spectrum is higher there than at the K line, more traditionally used. The result is similar. Whatever the wavelength, we always work in the same way. We take the solar disk out of the slit. We run the acquisition of the SER. Then we bring it back to scan at the speed of his choice. Many details, very intense and variable appear inside the calcium line during the scan. We stop the acquisition, and the image of the disk is put back on the slit. It is a routine. We then launch the INITI software. We select the last SER file obtained. We start the processing in the classical way. It is always as fast as ever. Here is the image in the calcium H line, calculated from all the frames present in the SER file. For the same date, on the left the aspect of the chromosphere in the red line of hydrogen, on the left in the line of calcium H. With a simple attachment on a telescope, a standard finderscope, and of course a Solex, we hope to have convinced you in this video that it is possible to make beautiful, original and exciting observations of our Sun. However, the means used are modest, within the reach of all. The implementation is practical and immediate. Remember also that the setup made of a finderscope and Solex weight less than 1.5 kg. The setup can be carried without worries by a big telescope like this one as an additional instrumentation but also by a small travel mount which will do perfectly well. It's up to you to try.